So in this video, I want to take a look at assembling your own custom ROM for use in your MSI 8080 emulator. I'm going to be using the Telmark Assembler. This is a, a command line assembler for Windows machines. Uh, it's just a really basic command line assembler. I've used it for all kinds of projects. It works really well. It can target multiple different microprocessor architectures. Uh, may have already said this. This isn't the TASM, the Turbo Assembler from Borland. This is the Telmark Assembler. If you search for Telmark Assembler, you'll find both this page here with uh, introduction and instructions on how to use it. You'll also find a download for it. Download it, unzip the file, it's ready to go. There's no installer. You, you just unzip it, jump into the folder you've unzipped it from, and you can run it from there, or you can copy the executable around as needed. So what I've done is I've unzipped it over in a, a different folder, and I've copied from that, that zip file in two files that I need, tasm.exe, which is the actual assembler, and tasm85.tab. Tab files to tasm are what explain to it how to deal with the opcodes for different microprocessor architectures. If we do a tasm question mark, we can see here that it can compile for the 8048, the 6502, the Z80, just all kinds of different architectures here. The 8080 uh, uses this 85 tab file, and it's really for the 8085. 8085 is a superset of the 8080. The opcode mnemonics are the same. So we need to use this 85 uh, tab file here to compile for the 8080. Uh, note that the 8080 opcodes are different than the Z80s. The, the mnemonics used are different. The four assembly files we're going to be looking at here are all written in 8080 assembler, so I really want to use the TASM85 tab file. So let's go ahead and assemble one of these just up front to make sure it'll assemble. We're going to tell it to use the tab85 file by the dash uh, 85 switch. And let's just go ahead and compile bit.asm. Actually, let's take something a little smaller. Let's take the urtest1.asm. We can see there was no errors. We can see two new files have been created, a list file and an object file. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list file. This is the output from the assembler. So we see our original source code over in this section. We see line numbers and we see the actual address, the, the opcodes which are in here. You know, the hex equivalents would be loaded into. So the, the origin of this program is at 000 hex, as we see here. And we see the hex values for each byte. And you could just toggle these in on the front panel. We've done this in a previous video, and you could run this program directly. We can go ahead and uh, just test compile all four of these to make sure they compile without errors, and they, they seem to. So there's no, you know, these compiled as is. Uh, things look good there. So let's go ahead and clean the directory up. I'm going to get rid of the object files it created and the list files it created and get back to just the original files we started with. No, I don't want to reload that. This can go away. So what I want to do now is I actually want to combine the source for all four of these assembly files into one file. So let's create a new file. We'll call it all.assembler. I want to create the new file. Oh, I opened Notepad up accidentally. I wanted Notepad++. Much better Notepad. And let's go ahead and open up Bit. Get all these source files opened. Light demo. You are test one. And you are test two. And so we've got the source code for all four of the original files that we assembled here, and I want to combine these all together in one assembly file. So I'm going to take the source code here from the first one, and there's a couple things to note here. This dot end is a directive to the assembler that, that, that there's nothing else to do. We're at the end of the file. That only exists once, so we only want one end in our all.asm. The org statement here tells the assembler, I want you to assemble this code to start at address 000 hex in the assembler. So let's copy this block out. Let's paste it in here. I'm going to create a little line here. 
to just visually in the assembler help make these a little clearer that they're individual blocks. I'll go ahead and paste that in. Did I not copy that? Copy. Paste that in down here. Let's take then you work two and copy his code across. So we've got the UART2 test one and UART2 test two. Should have actually pasted in a couple more of these. And we'll add that there. And let's go ahead and take bit. Actually, no, let's take light demo next. It's short. So let's take the source for light demo. And get it pasted in here. And I do not know why I can't paste that line multiple times, forcing myself to recopy. And we'll paste that source code and then we'll finally take this light demo or the bit demo that's a fairly long little routine and we'll copy that in so let's grab all the source for it and we're going to paste that in down here and we know we need a dot end that tells tasm we're at the end of the file so let's assemble this and see what happens so i'm going to write out that all dot assembly Let's do a TASM. We're going to target the 8080 processor, or really the 8085, same difference. And we're going to assemble all.asm. And we immediately get some error messages here. We've got duplicate label, start loop, loop, start loop, label value misaligned loop. So we've got some errors. Those errors are really due to there being duplicated labels. This is a label. So in this case, we have a label loop, and we have a jump of zero to loop. Well, that label gets repeated down here. So we need to make these unique. So I'm going to go ahead and just change these to ones. That'll make that block unique. I'll change these to twos. That'll make that block unique. I'll change these to threes. And that should make that block unique. And we can see here it created some formatting issues in the file. I'm going to clean those up. And we get down to a, 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 this longer routine here, and I'm going to add fours in these. Switch. I'm going to modify this because I want things to align well. We'll put the four on here. I'm going to take the E out again to keep that so that things align well. Changed four. Now we need to touch all of the labels in here to add the fours. Let's get that back in alignment. We took the O out and put a 4 here for the label. We took the E out and added a 4 here again for the label just to help things align. This goes to loop 4. This goes to loop 4. This goes to loop 4. So maybe we've cleaned up at least those label issues. Source code still looks relatively clean. I'm not seeing you know things zigzagging around. Everything's nice and columnar as I like it to look. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and assemble that now and see if we've cleaned up any of the errors. Well, we have it, 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 it compiled clean. However, there's an issue here still that we need to deal with. And that issue is, is that each one of these program blocks has an origin address and that's the address we, we we want to target here this code so the org address is telling it to compile this block of code starting an address 000 hex but we've duplicated that down here if we look at the list file uh, all dot list and we look at that first program we'll see that its first address is 0000, 000. But we have the same problem down here, and in our ROM, we, you know, this can't work. This has to be at a different address block in memory. This needs to be at a different address block, and this needs to be at a different address block. So address, to address that, we really need to offset these. So I'm going to start this block at address 20 should be plenty. Let's get this consistent again, slightly different layout four zero and I think that's going to be plenty for that 
and I'm going to put this at 6 0. So what I should be telling it to do now is this block of code will start in memory at address 00, 0 hex, this block of code at 0, 0, 002 hex, 0, 0, 004 hex, and 0, 0, 006 hex. Let's write that out and assemble again. This should tell us our list file changed, and it did, let's reload the list file. And we can see now that for the first program, it starts at address 0000. 0, 0, 0. For the second block, it starts where we told it, 0020, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0040, 0, uh, and 0060. 0, 0, Another little double check here is the last opcode or, or the last assembly language instruction in the machine. This is at address 0013 hex, 14 hex, 15 hex. This starts at 20. So we've got some wasted bytes here, but these aren't overlapping. We can see this is at uh, 36, 37, 38 hex, and this starts at 40. So we've got a few wasted bytes there again. We can see that this ends at 52. And this starts at 60, so again, some uh, wasted bytes. Uh, we can also kind of do a sanity check here. So we are telling the code in two places here to jump to the loop 1 label. The loop 1 address is 0008. Remember, these are byte swapped. 0008 is the loop 1 label. 0028 is the loop 2 label, so that looks correct. Uh, delay 3 is at 004D, and there's delay 3, and loop 3 is at 0045, and there's loop 3. Uh, there's a jump non zero here to 0073, which is right here. So again, that's correct. Changed 4 at 0081, 0081 changed 4. Loop 4 at 0066. 0066 is loop 4. Loop 4 again. So I think we've got this correct. Our modified labels seem to all be reasonable and make sense. The list file looks like this should be a loadable image. So this all looks good. So I'll go ahead and close these out here. And we should have now a couple extra files. We've got that object file and the list file we looked at. So what is the object file? Let's go ahead and open it up and take a quick look. All.object. All.object is actually an Intel hex file. Intel hex file is a way of using a text file that you can exchange among you know, different architectures that describe the contents of a ROM. Uh, Inside of this file, I, I just know this. this. These four bytes here represent the starting address the data goes. So we can see we've got something that gets loaded at address 0000. We can see we've got another block that gets ad loaded at address 0020, which should seem familiar. 0040 and 0060. So for the block that starts at address 00, the first opcode should be a 3E. And the last opcode should be a 00. This BC out here is a checksum to make sure that it's read this line correctly. Let's go ahead and open up the list file again and just take a look. Our first opcode should be, or our first instruction should be a 3E and it should end with a 00. Uh, and if we look at the object file, we can see it starts with 3E and it ends with a 00. So this is just a, a machine interchangeable format that's easy to move around the contents of something that goes into ROM. It could be an EEPROM, a flash ROM, or whatever. It's just a, you know, a flat text file that can be easily interchanged. This last line down here is the standard line that says this is the, the end uh, of the file. We can see for the code that we're going to start at 0060. It's fairly long, and then it continues on this next line at address 0078, and it starts with a 74. If we go to the list file for 0078, did I get that wrong? AF. Oh, I got that wrong. Yeah, AF. What have I got wrong here? 0078. Should have a 07 on it. Sorry, I got off by a byte there. 0078. 
of that 0060. I'm looking at line 78. 0078 has a 07 in it. So I was looking at the line number, not, not the address. In this case, this block of code just wrapped around to the next line. Uh, same thing here. This block of code happened to wrap around to the next line and say it address is 0038. We have a uh, 00. And if we go look at address 0038 here, when we get to it, there's 36, 37, 38 right here. We have a 00. So this object file is really the file we want to move over to our uh, MSI8080. On the MSI8080, they've been using the extension hex to represent ROM files. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this all.object to all.hex just to be consistent with what, what they uh, have over uh, in the emulator. That file no longer exists. Let's close these out. And let's move on now to getting this over onto our uh, MSI. So what I've got here is a folder here that has all the files that we just built. And I've, I've got a, a, a list here. So I've got the SD card removed from my MSI8080. It is mounted up on my PC, it mounted as drive F. And if you look in the MSI folder, you'll see these hex files. These are ROM images. And if I actually open one of these up and look at it, you'll see it, it, it's the same kind of thing. It, it's a, a hex file. Uh, this starts at address 0100. Uh, this is for execution and CPM. It's got the bytes to load and it checks them, but it's a very similar file. We get down here to the bottom, uh, normal end. So there's these hex files out here. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and open up the basic 8K just to take a peek inside of it. It's using a, so in this case, this file's got a, uh, all of the label, the addresses of, of all the labels in the program at the top. It'll really ignore that at load time. If we keep scrolling, we'll eventually get down to the hex data. The dollar sign in this case says start loading here. I, and there's all the bytes that comprise that 8K basic. So let's take a look at getting our newly created all.hex file over on the MSI8080. So I've got the uh, SD card removed from the MSI, and it's mounted here on my PC. And there's the two folders at the root, the MSI folder and, and, and the uh, web root. Inside of the MSI folder, we'll actually find the hex files for the ROMs that come by default with the machine. So all I want to do is just take my newly created hex file and we'll copy it over onto the SD card. And then we need to do one more thing. If we go into the uh, configuration folder, you'll find your boot.configuration here. I've made a backup of my original, which is what this extra file here is. But you can edit this file here and we can add ROM6 to it. So ROM6 equals all.hex. And there it is. We've added our newly created ROM to the list of ROMs that the MSI will know about. And this will let us go ahead and set the uh, MSI configuration to, to start running out of this ROM. So let's go ahead and save this. Now on your machine, uh, you'll, you'll of course have your SSID and your password configured here. In this example, uh, I've X those out just so you can't see what mine are. But let's go ahead and save this. And that really should be all we need to do here. Uh, We've copied the uh, hex file over, so all.hex is here. We've modified the boot.configuration file. Uh, need to actually edit it. To add an entry for ROM6, and we're all done. Uh, another comment here is on the uh, SD card, you also got a disks folder. And this is where all your disk images live. And you can see that I've added a bunch of my own here. We did this in a previous video. So uh, let's get this compact flashcard back in the MSI, and we'll go from there. So a quick look here in the web-based UI for the emulation. Uh, we can see that in the boot.com file, we've a I've definitely added the ROM6 equals all.hex. So the SD card is back in the machine, and the machine was powered up. And I did this screen capture. So I just wanted to confirm that the, the manual editing we did on the boot.conf file is there and in place in the emulation. So we've gone ahead and mounted the SD card back on my machine here. It's back here in the corner using the little extender card. 
and it's in. Let's go ahead and reset the machine now. So I'll, I'll reach back to the back and push the little reset button. And the machine should be resetting. And then the other uh, video window here, we can actually see the machine coming up. So this is just TerraTurn connected to COM3. COM3 is, is the UART that the ESP32 is connected to. And in this window, we can see the machine booting up. So I believe we're up at this point. I should be able to bring the power on and see the front panel here. But we won't. So right now, I believe the machine is configured to boot CPM. So let's hold up the examine key, hit the reset, and look at what the machine configuration currently is. Oops, I did that wrong. Hold up the examine key, reset. The LEDs are scrolling. So we are now in configuration mode. And we can see that the configuration here I just recognize this as CPM. Uh, this bit pattern for me is CPM. That is use the MPU B CPU mode. That's ROM address one. That is uh, four megahertz, Z80, and the wireless access point uh, mode where I run where it just it gets an address on my wireless network and exists on it. I want to change this configuration to use the ROM that we loaded in ROM six. So to do that, I'm not going to rely on, rely on the MPUB shadow ROM stuff. So I'm just going to say load that ROM image from that hex file at the addresses that inside of that file it said to load it at. There's none of the shadow stuff going on. I want to load up ROM 6. These three switches are in binary. ROM 0, ROM 1, ROM 2, ROM 3, ROM 4, ROM 5, ROM 6. These three just represent a binary uh, value for the ROM we're going to lose. Or use. I want to use ROM 6. I'm going to make it a 2 megahertz machine. I'm not going to allow undocumented opcodes. I'm going to make it an 8080. I'm just going to be as simple a machine as I can. And again, I want it on my wireless network. So I can now do a deposit and we can see that the LEDs match the switches. And I should be able to reset here again. And in the little terminal window we should see the machine going through the boot sequence and doing its thing. I don't know if it's up or not at this point. No, it's not responding to the power switch. No, it just continued on. There it is. So the machine is up. Uh, we can see in the little window down here to the side, if you can read it, that we're in the 8080 SIM. Uh, it's 2 megahertz, uh, 64K of RAM, blah, 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 blah. But what we've done here is we've ma mapped that custom ROM we created in an address 0000 on the machine. So if we examine address 0000, we see the 3E, and that was the first opcode I expected to see. Now if I run the program in the ROM, we'll see the machine wake up. And over here on the terminal, if I get focus on it, as I type characters, they're getting echoed back. And that's what that first UART test did, was just read a character and echo it back. Let's stop this running. Let's go to the address where we uh, put that second little program. And remember that was address 0020 hex. Again, it starts with a 3E, so that's what I expect to see here when I run it. And now when I type characters over here in the terminal, they should come up here on the programmed output, the ASCII value of them. And there it is. So we can see that, that program two is executing as expected. We go ahead and stop this running now, and we go to address 0040, and we run. This is that little bit pro program that moves the uh, single bit across the programmed output here, one bit at a time. So we can see that you know already three of the four programs we put in the custom ROM are here. Go ahead and stop that running, and if we go to 0080, remember that was the origin for the fourth little program. stop need to examine so I get that address that is the address and we get this pattern and I'm not sure what this really is I haven't figured out what this program is supposed to do uh, it had something to do with like killing the bits down here or something I haven't been able to make it do anything beyond just kind of give me this weird blinky pattern but there's something here in memory and it's running we can go ahead and stop here Let's go back to the program we loaded at 0020 hex and run that. 
and we should be back now where we can type characters as we're seeing on the terminal and we can see, see the ASCII equivalent being written up there on the screen. So let's go ahead and stop the emulation now and power off. I want to set this thing back to CPM22 boot mode. So I'm going to hold up examine, press reset, wait for the LEDs, and we're back to the machine configuration. So for CPM, we need to use that special MPUB shadow mode or, or whatever you want to call it. It's ROM1, so 001 is ROM1. I want to be, in this case, a 4 megahertz machine, allow undocumented opcodes. I want to be a Z80 processor, and again, I want to be on my wireless network as a standard uh, device on the network. We can deposit that here. I can reach back and reset. We should see in the little terminal window over here, the machine will go through its boot sequence. Don't know if it wasn't watching, I don't know if it did anything or not. Okay, so we got booted back up, and we can see again we're now in Z80 sim rather than 8080 because we changed the processor type. We can see over here we're 4 megahertz. Uh, and we can see the disk A has CPM22 in it. So in this case, we've brought the CPM boot ROM back into the machine, and I should be able to go ahead and do a run and bring up CPM. And, and we see over here in the little terminal session that CPM is up and running. Now in this case, I'm just using a terror term on COM3. COM3 is the UART that shows up, or the serial port when I plug the MSI 8080 into my a little USB hub. I could also be in, in, in the UI here. Let's see if we can get this refresh and connect. We could also be in the UI here. I know there's a way to get control back over here. and We just grab control here from TerraTerm over here back into the, the TTY device on the machine. So really pretty cool. Once you kind of understand how these switches work, it's pretty easy to swap in and out ROMs uh, to do your own thing. But really what I wanted to demo here was the creation of a custom ROM, uh, assembling some 80 assembly code, uh, creating a ROM hex file image, getting it onto the SD card and getting it loaded into the machine. So uh, I think with that, there's not much more to talk to here. So uh, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Talk soon.